now we all want the retirement we deserve, and for many, this means navigating Medicare, which can often feel, well, really quite daunting, yep. to be honest. But our next guest is here to help put us all at ease. Welcome back, our good buddy, Senior VP of Physicians Mutual, Bob Goodyear. Oh, Welcome Bob. back, Bob. Great to see you. you. We love it when you're here, Bob. Yes, well, Merry Christmas. We decorated a little early for yeah, you, Bob. It's beautiful. never too early. <laughs> beautiful to we fire. knew you were coming. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. Like, we've lit the fire. So as you know, we've talked many times in the past about the decisions that people need to make as they transition into retirement. Now, I imagine this past year, those decisions have, have probably changed quite a bit. Yeah. We've all had to adjust our plans this last year. And if you're approaching retirement, uh, even more so. One of the trends that we saw going into 2020 is that people are working longer. If you think of that magical age of 65, more people working past 65. Sure. What we've seen since March, and this is coming from a study from a couple months ago from the University of Chicago, that more people are leaving the workforce in the older segment, nearly 3 million, and they're less likely to come back. So we're seeing a shift in terms of how people who are thinking about retirement, the kind of decisions that they're making uh, as, as it approaches to what's best for them. What's important is that people are all different places, and it's, it's really particular to their own circumstances. So you have some people uh, are worried about their health, and they, they simply, be, maybe because of the nature of their job, they feel it's best for them to leave the workforce. You have some people that maybe actually are older than 65, enjoyed working, and feared what retirement would be. And this has forced them to be at home, and they're saying, mm, not, not so, so bad. bad. Right? Yeah, I think I'm just going to call it quits right here. And you've got other folks that potentially, given their financial situation, may have to work even longer. So it, there's not necessarily one way that people are going, but definitely everyone is thinking about some, their, their approach to retirement, which then triggers some important decisions they need to make as they do decide whether to retire That's or not. That's right. That's one of the best things about when you come to visit. You really give us different options, different paths, depending on our conditions. So this is great. Let's get into some of the decisions that people are faced with when they're ready to transition into retirement. The first decision, and one that you've been thinking about probably for years or decades, is financial. Mm -hmm. I mean, do I have enough money to support the lifestyle sure. that I want in retirement? And so those are plans that have been in motion for some time. But it is an important decision because when you retire, you know, a certain amount of income stops and you have to rely upon other sources. A decision that people really haven't thought about or processed until they're right approaching that retirement decision is what kind of health care I want in retirement. Mm -hmm. What kind of health coverage do I need? What is this thing called Medicare? And how do I apply? What kind of benefits does it provide? Because it's something people aren't familiar with, if you guys will bear with me one more time to go through the ABC of it. Medicare. It's very well, important. Okay. You can't hear it enough. It's okay. absolutely true. And you make it sound so simple and, and, and understandable in layman's terms. So please. Well, hopefully I'll stay true to that. <laughs> so there's three. Uh, well, we'll talk about four parts. The first one is Part A. Part A is your hospital insurance. And Part A is funded through the Medicare taxes that if you've been employed all your years, you've already paid for. So there's no premium associated with it. You've earned it. You paid the taxes for it. Got it. It covers all the hospital expenses. Okay. Then there's Part B. Part B is your outpatient services. It's your doctor visits. It comes with a premium. And it's funded you know, about 25% through individual premiums and general tax revenues for the remaining part. Because there's a premium associated with it, that's where you kind of have to really understand the difference between Part A and Part B. And under certain circumstances, whether or not I sign up for both or just Part A or Part B. Okay. We'll get to that a little bit later. Okay. Part C is a, something totally separate from Medicare. It's a private alternative called Medicare Advantage, where they provide similar benefits, but they're configured differently. So that's a complete separate option that people have as well. Okay. Part D is your drug coverage. And so that helps with your prescription drug expenses when you're retired. It's an important benefit. And one, this particular time of year, people are reevaluating. Because every year at this time, October 15th to December 7th, you can take a look at your drug plan and say, is this the right drug plan for me? And you can switch it from one plan to another. Right. In short, why that's important, we've worked with people in terms of looking at their drug plans and make sure that they had the right one. Where there's a case uh, just recently where someone saved $5,000 a year by changing their drug plan. So the so what for people are watching, oh if you have the same drug plan and have never taken a look whether it's the still right drug <gasps> plan for you, it's, it's good to take a look at it. You have $5,000 worth, my goodness, that is incredible. Now, okay, you've told us the ABCs and even Ds of Medicare, yeah. however, Medicare does not cover everything. It's not 100% coverage. What does that mean? And then how do people prepare for what isn't covered? 
the first time we talked about this, you gave yourself an F for not being familiar with Medicare. Yeah. And bingo, now you remember that it yeah. doesn't cover everything. Yeah. Is, well done. You're, 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 <laughs> I'm you, learning. You are absolutely correct because there's duct deductibles and there's coinsurance that goes along with Medicare. And so what people look to is a Medicare supplement uh, policy. Okay. And that, that's what Physicians Mutual offers. And yeah. what Medicare supplement does, it covers all the gaps in Medicare. And why is that important for seniors is because when you're on a fixed budget, fixed income in retirement, yeah. you want predictability. And so when you have your Medicare, you have your Medicare supplement, you know what your monthly outlay will be in terms of premium. And there won't be any surprises because you have to pay a Part A deductible when you're in the hospital, or you have to pay 20% of all the expenses as it relates to Part B, which can amount to a significant amount of money. So it offers this great predictability and it's guaranteed renewable where you know, our company or any other company cannot take that away from you, regardless of what great. your health condition is. That is that huge. Is it's great. so huge. And yeah, those uh, gaps in the Medicare coverage can be so big. So supplemental is important. We understand uh, Medicare, the supplemental, but what about the actual enrollment for people to actually enroll in this? Yeah, and so this is a part of Medicare where my best advice to people is to talk to a trusted individual to step you through it, because it can get very confusing. I'm going to try not to confuse anybody at home, but give you enough so that when you do work with someone, it'll make sense to you. First off, the, the easiest part to enroll in Medicare is if you're taking Social Security age 65 and you're retiring at age 65, it happens automatically with the fact that you have your Social Security benefits planned for age 65. So you don't have to worry about A and B enrollment. The situation where you have to make a decision, where you specifically have to enroll, is if you're working past age 65. So many people past 65 still have their group health insurance. Yeah. And so that's a part of their health coverage, and they don't necessarily think about Medicare. Oftentimes they enroll in Part A because there's no premium associated with it. So they'll have their Part A Medicare yep. and their group health plan. Now the question is about Part B, whether I need it or not. And why is that important? Because Part B comes with a premium, mm. out-of-pocket premium. So you want to time it perfectly. If you got health coverage through your employer, you don't necessarily need a Part B. But... Uh, you also want to make sure that you're rolling Part B when you lose your group coverage because there's a penalty if you don't within eight months from losing your health care coverage. I know that was a oh lot, and okay. I think it demonstrates that it's, it's good to sit down and talk with someone yes. because yep. there are ramifications if you don't make the right decision yeah. in terms of when you enroll. And there's a lot of information to retain, especially when you're making these, you know, these life decisions. What if you do, unfortunately, make the wrong decision? So uh, there are opportunities to change. And so, you know, during this open enrollment period, for example, if someone is not uh, uh, comfortable with their Medicare Advantage plan, they can go back to original Medicare or switch plans. So there's an open enrollment period as it relates to original Medicare and that Part C Medicare Advantage that people can take advantage of. When it comes to Medicare Supplement, there are opportunities for you to get a new policy as well. Given your health situation, it can get complicated. And so... It is important, you know, if in, in most cases, do it once, do it right on the front end. And that puts you in the best possible position. But we have been able to help many people as well who've already, let's say, purchased a Medigap policy and switch them over to a different plan. So there are options available, but you need to explore it. And if this is your first time, again, do it once, do it right is, is always the best, but there are options if somehow you, you need a do-over. That's good to know. You mentioned helping people. You've helped so many people. You really do. You really lay it out there. You and everybody at Physicians Mutual. Uh, final words of advice or encouragement for everybody. I know. Uh, you know, you don't feel isolated in this decision-making process, that there are opportunities for you to reach out to people to get the explanation you need. This subject matter seems complex because you're not familiar with it, but that's just because you're not familiar with it. A good educator will we'll explain it to you properly. And so what we've done at Physicians Mutual is made sure that we reach out to people to what's most appropriate for this situation that makes them feel safe. So it could be you know, through the web or over the phone or an appropriately physically distanced face-to-face -face contact in terms of having the explanation that you need. So there are options available so you don't feel like you need to do it alone. Sure. Good. Uh, Good. And we have a great example, a, a great customer's uh, from Louisiana. Louisiana, they love Hallmark. They love Home and Family. Oh, we love we like them all. So from down we south, love you, oh, Louisiana. Ron and Linda basically, <laughs> you know, they tried the process on their own, but there's, when you have that trusted advisor to help, it just is so much easier and gives you so much peace of mind. So here's a short little video from yeah. Ron and Linda. Great. Let's take a look. The first thing I did is I got the uh, Medicare book and I read it and I tagged it and I yellow 
highlighted everything. And by the time I got finished reading the book, I was more confused <laughs> than when I started. As you age, you know, you're going to run into some situations where you're going to need some medical treatment. And I wanted to make sure that I made the right decision. And Physicians Mutual has been just a blessing to us. And a blessing to us as well, oh. as has Bob Gunya. So much great information, you. Bob. You you make us feel safe, my and You friend. get an A now. You're oh, no thank you. you I've gone from a. F to A. I'm, I'm not going to ask my grade. I'm no. going to ask my grade. We'll You're wait for solid. that next time. Oh, uh, Cameron. I'm, I'm a there. model student, <laughs> and I'm going to the head of the class. Thank you, Bob. You're always at the head of our class. <laughs> for more information on Medicare, be sure to visit physiciansmutual.com. Home and Family, weekday mornings at 10, only on Hallmark Channel.